Hello and welcome to the GoLang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about gRPC concept. What is gRPC? gRPC is the modern lightweight communication protocol that implemented by Google. gRPC is a high performance open source universal RPC framework or remote processor card that can run in any environment. It enables the server and client applications to communicate transparently and build connected systems. With gRPC, you can utilize HTTP2 capabilities such as server-side streaming, client-side streaming, or even bidirectional streaming should you wish. gRPC uses an interface description language or IDL to define a service contract and uses HTTP2, the latest network transport protocol, as the default transport protocol and gRPC supports only protocol buffers to transfer data between server and client. It can efficiently connect services in and across data centers with pluggable support for load balancing, tracing, health checking, and authentication. The G in gRPC does not stand for Google. It is a recursive acronym that stands for gRPC Remote Processor Call. gRPC originated from Google in 2015. It was based on an internal Google project called Stubi, which was an internal framework for gRPC, but just for Google services. Nowadays, Stubi has been rebranded gRPC and it is free open source project with an open source and roadmap. Google designed gRPC to be performant and as efficient as possible. The structure of the protocol itself is lean with the minimal processing occurring at the marshalling and unmarshalling stage. Because of this, gRPC is inherently efficient, made only better by building up an HTTP2, which enables highly effective use of network resources. What you end up with is a lean platform using a lean transport system to deliver lean bits of code and overall decrease in latency and size. gRPC model gRPC provides for different ways of communication between client and server. The four different ways are unary, server streaming, client streaming, and bidirectional streaming. So effectively in gRPC both client and server can talk to each other. Unary. This is the simplest one. The client sends a request and the server sends a response. Client streaming. The client can send a stream of multiple messages while the server is expected to return only a single response to all client requests. Server streaming. The client will send only one message while the server can send a stream of messages back to it. And bidirectional streaming. Both client and server can stream multiple messages. The streaming will be in parallel and with no order. Also, it will no blocking. Neither client nor server needs to wait for a response before sending the next message. Performance Since gRPC inherently uses HTTP2, so all the performance optimizations applied to HTTP2 automatically are available in gRPC. HTTP2 has introduced several performance optimization over HTTP1 such as duplex streaming, multiplexing, and header compression. Plug gRPC uses protocol buffers inherently and since protocol buffers are binary data and have less size, they are transferred over the network fast. Since gRPC is built on top of protocol buffer, it provides automatic code generation. In fact, with protocol buffers, code generation is a must thing to use gRPC. 
gRPC can utilize HTCP connection very effectively. Due to these two reasons, gRPC is very fast. Where to use gRPC? Microservices gRPC shines as a way to connect servers in service-oriented environments. One of the original problems its predecessor, STUD aimed to solve was wiring together microservices. It is well suited for a wide variety of arenas from medium and large enterprises, systems all the way to the web scale, e-commerce and SaaS offerings. Client server applications. GRPC works just as well in client server applications where the client applications run on desktop or mobile devices. It uses HTTP2 which improves on HTTP1 in both latency and network utilization. Integrations and APIs gRPC is also a way to offer APIs over the internet for integrating applications with services from third-party providers. Prerequisites Let's get a start with installing the prerequisites of the development. Go version 1.6 or higher. For installation instruction see Go's getting a start guide, so use the following URL. Protocol buffer version 3. Install the protocol compiler that is used to generate gRPC service code. Now use the following commands. And gRPC. Use the following command to install gRPC requirements. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about some concepts of gRPC. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's gRPC concepts. Defining services In gRPC, a client application can directly call a method on a server application on a different machine as if it were a local project, making it easier for you to create distributed applications and services. As in many RPC systems, gRPC is based around the idea of defining a service, specifying the methods that can be called remotely with their parameters and return types. On the server side, the server implements this interface and runs a gRPC server to handle client calls. On the client side, the client has a stube, referred to as just a client in some languages, that provides the same methods as a server. gRPC clients and servers can run and talk to each other in a variety of environments from servers inside Google to your own desktop and can be written in any of gRPC supported languages. So for example, you can easily create a gRPC server in Java with clients in Go, Python or Ruby. In addition, the latest Google APIs will have a gRPC versions of their interfaces letting you easily build Google functionality into your applications. Define a protocol file. By default, gRPC uses protocol buffers, Google's major open source mechanism for serializing structured data. The first step when working with protocol buffers is to define the structure for the data you want to serialize into a protocol file. This is an ordinary text file with a dot proto extension. Protocol buffer data is structured as messages, where each message is a small logical record of information containing a series of name value pairs called fields. Here is a simple example. Message student, message search. Then once you have specified your data structures, 
you use the protocol buffer compiler Portok to generate data access classes in your preferred languages from your proto definition. These provide symbol accessors for each field like name and set name as well as methods to serialize parse the whole structure to from row bytes. So, for instance, if your chosen language is Golang, write the compiler and the example above will generate a class called a student. You can then use this class in your application to populate, serialize, and retrieve a student protocol buffer messages. You define gRPC services in ordinary port of files with RPC method parameters and return times specified as a protocol buffer messages. For the example, we can create another message like search for the parameter as request. Now you can create a service for gRPC. So write service, a student service, and write your gRPC methods. Then you define RPC methods inside your service definition, specifying the request and response types. gRPC service method gRPC lets you define four kinds of service method. A simple RPC, where the client sends a request to the server using the stube and waits for a response to come back just like a normal function call. Now you can see the syntax. A server side a streaming RPC where the client sends a request to the server and gets a stream to read a sequence of message back. The client reads from the returned stream until there are no more messages. Results are streamed rather than returned at once. Now you can see the syntax. A client side streaming RPC. Where the client writes a sequence of messages and sends them to the server, again using a provided stream. Once the client has finished writing the messages, it waits for the server to read them out and returns its response. You specify a client side streaming method by placing the stream keyboard before the request type. A bidirectional streaming RPC. Where both sides send a sequence of messages using a read via stream, the two streams operate independently so clients and servers can read and write in whatever order they like. For example, the server could wait for receive all the client messages before writing its responses, or it could alternately read a message then write a message, or some other combination of reads and writes. The order of messages in each stream is preserved. You specify this type of method by placing the stream keyboard before both the request and the response. Create a method for gRPC service. Now we define a method for our service. Now you can see the syntax for a student service. gRPC uses Protoc with a special gRPC plugin to generate code from your proto file. You get generated gRPC client and server code, as well as regular protocol buffer code for populating, serializing, and retrieving your message types. So we designed a method inside the gRPC service that is supposed to return a student based on its field of a student. It's not worry that within a service, the input parameter and the return value are both of the message type. This dot proto file exposes our student service which features a solitary get student function which can be called by any gRPC client written in any language. These dot proto definitions are typically shared across clients of all shapes and sizes so that they can generate their own code to talk to our gRPC server. You can generate the Go specific gRPC code using the Protoc tool in two ways. You can see this syntax. 
After executing above comment, you will see this will have generated a student.pb.go file, which will contain generated code for us to easily call within our code. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about some concepts of gRPC. And in this session, we want to do a gRPC example. Building a microservice in Golang. In this session, we want to implement gRPC in practice. For this purpose, we design an example. In this example, we want to implement the connection between a client and a server with the MySQL database by gRPC service. It is important to note that the client cannot communicate directly with the database, but the client is connected to the server and the server is directly connected to the database. The client sends its requests to the server and the server analyzes them and sends the appropriated request to the database and receives the response from the database and sends its response to the client. Now it's time to go into the VS Code program and implement your example. First go to Explorer and create a project folder like named communication create a folder inside it named protocol and create a file like a student with the proto extension inside it Okay, so we define the syntax inside it and set its value equal to proto tree, which represents the protocol buffer version. So write syntax equals proto tree. Come on. semicolon. Now define option and set go on the line package value. So write option go on the line package equals backslash protocol. The go on the line package option defines the import path of the package which will contain all the generated code for this file. The go package name will be the last pass component of the import pass. In this example, we want the client to send two requests to the server. First send a request based on the student's ID and receive information about that student and second request based on sending a student name to the server and returning all the people who have that name. Since we know that the input parameters and return values in the methods of a service in gRPC are of the message type. So we define two messages as request and response. We create a student message as response or return type and create search message as request or input parameter for the student service functions. Now define message. For example, we want to name it student. So write message student and define three variables first id by int type second name by the string type and third age by the int type so we write int 64 id and equals one a string name equals two and int 
32 h equals 3 and define another message for example we want to name it search by id so we write message search by id and define one variable for it like named id by int 64 type and 64 id equals 1 and define another message for example we want to name it search by name so we write message search by name and define one variable for it like named name by a string type so we write a string name equals one now let's time to define a service you specify a named service in your dot proto file for example we create a service named a student service so we write service student service in this time we want to define two rpc methods a method is supposed to receive an id as input parameter and return the student from the database and the other method is supposed to get a student name as input parameter and display the list of all students in the database that have that name so we write rpc set a name for method like get a student by id set input parameter because in this case we want to get a student base id we use from search by id message search by id and returns and set a student message as return type and set curly brackets and define another method rpc set a name for method like get a students by name get a students by name set input parameter because in this case we want to get all students have the same name so we use from search by name message search by name message and returns and because we want to fetch lists of students so we use a stream of a student message as return type so we write a stream student and set color braces now we could define two service functions in order to be able to use our service functions and messages we must first compile it when we compile it a file with the extensions pb.go is created inside the project which is the equivalent of the messages and service methods and we will access the components in the proto file now it's time to compile our proto file to create the equivalent golang file first update proto file and then create grpc proto let's go to command line and write cd communication protoc dash dash go underscore out equals for destination we set dot 
and for source pass go to the protocol package and call the student on portal 5 proto and student.portal and run the command now we can see the student file.portal is created and run command for generate grpc portal file so we write portal dash dash go dash grpc underscore out equals set destination dot and for source pass go to the protocol package and call a student dot protocol file so we write protocol and student dot protocol run the command okay we see that two files was created in the project pass which we can use to exchange our data that call a student and a student underscore grpc with the pb.go extensions in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we were able to create the protocol buffer messages and gRPC services and create equivalent Golang struct file. Now it's time to design the database layer to communicate a connection between the database and the server. Now go to project folder and create a folder named like model. In model folder, we create a file like named student.go inside it. Right click and create a new file like student.go. Now we are going to create a structure equivalent to a student table in the MySQL database in this side. So we create a struct name student with fields such as fields stored inside the mysql database so we write first package model and type a student extract and write the fields id by the type int 64 and name by a string type and age by int 32 we format the code and save the project now go to project folder and create another folder named like configuration which is supposed to include the settings for the connection of the go program with the mysql database so right click on the project folder create a folder like configuration We want to create the database connection settings as a JSON file. So inside the configuration folder, we create a file called config with the JSON extension. Right click on the configuration folder and create a file like config.json. The program requires two main settings to connect to the database. First is driver name and second is data source name. Driver name is MySQL and data source name is a combination of username, password and database name that we want to connect it. So we write a JSON file for settings of database. Open and close braces and write key and value between them. So we write first driver name as key and set value for it my sql set comma and go to the next line set another key like data source name and set value for it my database username is root column and my database password here is oracle 
at sign slash and database name is person reformat the code and save the project we could create a json file for connection to mysql database now go to project folder and create another folder named like db tools and create a file inside it like named dbconnection.go that file contains methods to interact with the database now go to the project explorer and write on the project folder create another folder like db tools and inside it create another file like db connection.go before doing anything we must first import the mysql database driver in our package so first package db tools and import underscore github.com slash go dash sql dash driver slash my sql okay now we want to create a connection to the database so first create a struct and define an instance of db struct from sql package for communicate the connection for example we named it db initializer so we write type db initializer extract and define a variable like db from type of sql dot db now we want to design a method whose task is to connect to the mysql that is accept two input parameters as driver name and data source name by the string type and return a db initializer struct instance and error instance for example we named it connect function so write find connect set a string variable as driver name and set another string as data source name like data source name a string and set return type first is a pointer of db initializer struct so we write pointer of db initializer and second is error go to create the body of connect function the required method to connect to the database is the open function of the sql package so we should import sql package open function opens a database specified by its database driver name and the driver specified data source name usually consisting of at least a database name and connection information and it returns db object and error so first define two variables like db connection and error db connection and error colon equals calling open function from a sql package and set driver name and data source name as parameters sql dot open driver name and data source name okay now check error status if error not equals nil from the package log calling fatal function and set error dot error okay and we should set two values as return type first an instance of db initializer struct and second is an error object as return type so in this case 
We create the DB initializer extract instance in line and initialize DB field of DB initialize extract by the DB connection that created from open function. So we write return ampersand db initializer and initialize db field by db connection db field by db connection and set nil as error value reformat the code and save the project okay we could create a connect function to communicate with database in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session until next session goodbye hello and welcome to the golang programming language course in the previous session, we could connect to the database, and in this session, we want to perform CRUD operations by writing different functions. First, we start by writing the queries related to the SELECT statement. So, create a function to select a student-based student ID by sending an ID to the database as the input parameter of the SELECT method and returning the student whose ID is the same as the value sent. Now go to create our function. Func Set receiver for method, we assign this method to the db initializer extra. So write db initializer by the type s star db initializer. And define name of method for the example select a student based id and set input parameter this method accept an int value as id variable because it will return a student base id id int 64 and return type is two values first an a student object and second is an error value so we write model dot student and error go to create body of the function now by calling db initializer variable we will have access to the db object from the db struct of sql package and through it we can call the query row and execute the query that is expected to return at most one row query row function accepts a sql query statement as a string parameter and returns a row object so define a variable like row colon equals db initializer dot db dot query row in this query we want to fetch the student information whose id we have sent to the database as a query input parameter so we write select a star from students where id equals set a question mark and set id variable as input value okay it's time to call a scan function this function copies the columns from the matched row into the values pointed at by destination so before invoking the scan function first create an instance of a student model so we write student colon equals 
model dot student now calling a scan function by the row and it will return an error object so define a variable like error row colon equals row dot scan and set a student field so we write ampersand student dot id ampersand student dot name and ampersand student dot h now check error status if error not equals nil If we have error, we return from the function return student and error. And now return values of the function return student and nil. Reformat the code and save the project. Now we could define a function named select a student base ID that return a student of a student table in person database by the select a statement base ID number. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define a function named select a student base ID. And in this session, we want to create a function to select all the students based the given name by sending a name to the database as the input parameter of the select method and returning list of students whose name is the same as the value sent. So go to define this function. Func. Set receiver for method. We assign this method on the db initializer strike. So we write db initializer. And the type is asterisk of db initializer. Define name of method. Select stu based name and define input parameter this method accept a string value as name variable because it will return list of a student based name name a string and return type is two values first array of a student's object and second is an error value so we write slice model of a student and error now go to implement the body of function now by calling the db initializer variable we will have access to the db object from the db struct of sql package and through it we can call the query method and executes that returns rows typically a select the arguments are for any placeholder parameter in the query Query function accepts a SQL query statement as a strict parameter and returns two rows and error object. So define two variables like rows and error. Rows and error colon equals db initializer dot db dot query in this query, we want to fetch list of a student's information whose name we have sent to the database as a query input parameter. So we write select a star from students where name equals set a quotation mark. 
insert name variable as input value. Now check error status. So we write if error not equals nil log dot fata error dot error function. Okay. One of the return values of our method is a list of students. So we create an array of student struct to add to each new student that is read from the database from the student table. And at the end of fetching data from the database, the student's array is returned by the function. So we write students colon equal array of model dot student. Now put the return value of the query inside the for loop to access each of the rows by the next function. So we write for rows dot next function. Next function prepares the next result row for reading with the scan method. It returns true on success or false if there is no next result row or an error happened while preparing it. So we create an object from a student struct, a student colon equals model.student and calling a scan method on rows result to read records one by one. Scan copies the columns in the current row into the values pointed at by destination. The number of values in destination must be the same as the number of columns in rows. Define an error variable and invoke scan function. Error equals rows dot scan function. Set a student ID as pointer ampersand student dot ID and set a student name as pointer ampersand student dot name and set a student age as pointer ampersand student dot h scan converts columns read from the database into the following common go types and the special types provided by the sql package so check error status if error not equals nil set log dot fatal error dot error and continue now we add each read record that contains a student to the list of students by the append function the append built-in function appends elements to the end of a slice so we write students equals append students and add student so return a students list and nil as return values of function return students and nil okay reformat the code and save the project now we could define a function named select all students by name that fetch all students of a student table in person database by the given name in this session we were able to design the database layer and create two functions in it one function to fetch a student base id and one function to fetch list of a student based on the given name in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define a database layer. And in this session, we want to establish the communication between gRPC and the database. Now it's time to design the server part. First go to Explorer and create a project folder like named server. Create project folder. 
server and create a file called service controller new file service controller that go here we want to implement different parts related to grpc service to be able to communicate with the methods in the database we create a struct and inside it we create a field from the db initializer struct of the db tools package and in this way we establish the connection between the database layer and grpc layer so we write first package server and type set a name for a struct like grpc controller struct define a variable by the type of db initializer for the example db connection from asterisk db tools db initializer we now have access to the components needed to use the database you need to initialize the db connection field so that you can use it to connect to the methods in the database to do this we need to call the connect method from the db tools package the return value of this method is an object from the db initializer struct and using it we can set the db connection field in the grpc controller struct now we go to create a function and implement this so we write func set a name for function like grpc service initializer grpc server initializer and set two required parameters for using connect function to create a connection to the database first is driver name and second is data source name driver name a string and data source name a string this function is supposed to return two values for us first an object from grpc controller struct and the other is an error object so we set a pointer of grpc controller asterisk gr pc controller and set an error now go to implements the body of function it's time to call connect function from db tools package first define two variables like db and error db and error colon equals db tools dot connect set driver name and set data source name check error status if error not equals nil return nil and error and return an object from grpc controller struct and initialize db connection field of it by db field created from calling connect function of db tools package so we could initialize db connection field for using in this package so we write return ampersand grpc controller and initialize db connection by db and set error reformat the code and save the project 
Now we could create a function named grpc server initializer. If we call the grpc server initializer function by initializing its input parameters, we can initialize the DB connection field of the grpc controller struct and using it, we will have access to the database methods to perform CRUD operation by grpc server. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define a function named grpc server initializer to initialize the DB connection field of the grpc controller struct and using it. In this session, it's time to implement the grpc server methods. If you remember, in our protofy, we create messages and services related to grpc. Then we compiled our existing protofile and created the equivalent protofile in Go language. Now it's time to implement the methods in the protofile in Golang in the gRPC service. For this purpose, we go to the file created from our compiled protofile. So go to project folder and go to protocol folder and open a student underscore grpc.pb.go. Okay, these functions are located in the student service server interface and we open the find box by press Ctrl F and type service server Okay, now we can see two unimplemented functions in the portal file Copy these two functions and transfer them to our gRPC service and implement them. Copy these files and go to service controller. One is the get a student by ID method which takes a student's ID as a parameter and returns the complete information of that student. And another is the get a students by name method, which receives name as the input parameter and fetch all students whose names are equal to with the input parameter. Now go to implement this function for the grpc controller struct. Let's start with the get a student by ID function. So we write func set a variable like server by the type grpc controller as implements the function server asterisk grpc controller get a student by id and set a variable for context like context and set a variable like id to point the search by id message from protocol package id and set asterisk and set protocol dot search by id and set return types first a student struct from protocol package that created in grpc portal file asterisk portal dot student and set error okay the method was created now we have to implement its body by calling the server object from the grpc controller struct, it has access to the db connection field through which we can call the get a student by id method that accept an id as input parameter and return two values. First, the student information whose id is equal to the input parameter and second value is an error. So we define two variables like a student 
and error column equals set server object server and call db connection object db connection object and invoke get a student base id get a student base id function and call get id function from the search by id message by calling id variable id dot get id check error status if error not equals nil return nil and error and return values for this function student and nil but we see that our method has an error and does not accept the student as return value the answer is obvious the reason for the error is that the return value of the select student base id method is a student of the model package but the return value of the get student by id method is a student from the proto file so we have to create a function to convert a model student to a proto file student so we write Funk convert to grpc student set a student from model package as input parameter a student from model package model dot student and set a student as return type from proto file so write asterisk protocol dot students now return a student object from proto package and initialize it by the student values from model package so we write return ampersand protocol student and initialize the field of this id equals student id and name equals student name and age equals student dot h reformat the code and save the project so we were able to create a function to get an instance student of the model package and convert it to a student of protofile now go to the get a student by id method and use this function for convert the student instance so clear the error code and return calling convert to grpc student function and set a student as input parameter for convert to protocol students convert to grpc student and set a student and set nil reformat the code and save the project and we don't have any error okay now we could implement get a student by id method which receives an id as the input parameter and returns the student who has that id in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Go programming language course. In the previous session, we could implement get a student by id method. And in this session, we want to implement get a students by name function. First, uncomment this unimplemented method and clear 
this value and write func set a variable like server by the type grpc controller as implements the function server asterisk grpc controller get a student's by name and set a variable like name to point the search by name message from protocol package name and set the asterisk and set search by name message from protocol package protocol search by name message and set a variable like grpc students as a student service underscore get students by name server from protocol package so we write grpc students from protocol dot student service underscore get students by name server and set return type that is an error error okay the method was created now we have to implement its body by calling the server object from the grpc controller struct it has access to the db connection field through which we can call the get students by name method that accept a name variable as input parameter and return two values first all students whose name are equal to the input parameter and second value is an error so we define two variables like students and error colon equals set server object dot and call db connection object and dot invoke get a student's base name and call get name function from the search by name message by calling name variable name dot get name function first check error status if error not equals nil return error To iterate the values inside the students, we use the range loop so that we can display the values inside each record separately. So we write for underscore comma a variable name like a student colon equals range in a students. Because the return value of the get a students by name method is a list of students of the model package, while we need students of our portfolio, so we need to convert each model student to port student. So using convert to grpc student function. So first define a variable like grpc student colon equals, and now calling convert to grpc student function convert to grpc student function and pass each model student as parameter for it and get a port student a student now we send each port student to the grpc students stream by calling send function from grpc protofile that accept a student from protofile and return an error so define an error variable error colon equals from grpc student stream calling send function grpc students calling send function and set grpc student as parameter for it grpc student okay and check error status if 
error not equals nil return error and return nil as return value of the function return nil reformat the code and save the projects okay in this session we were able to complete the package related to grpc controller by entering the student underscore grpc.pb.go file and receiving the unimplemented methods related to the server section and implementing them in our grpc service now the client can use these functions and call in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we were able to complete the package related to gRPC controller. And in this session, we want to go to create the main package. So go to the project explorer, create a new folder named main and create a new file like main.go. Now set package main. First, define two functions for communication between client and server. First, create a function for running client that we named it, for example, run grpc client. So we write func run grpc client and create another function for running server that we named it for example run grpc server func run grpc server before we want to use from grpc service we need to create a connection to the database Previously, we designed a method called grpc server initializer in the server package, which contains a method called connect from the DB tools package, which by taking two values of driver name and data source name creates a connection to the MySQL database. We also previously saved driver name and data source name information inside the JSON file in the configuration package. Now you can see it. Now it's time to use the information in our JSON file to connect to the database. For using the JSON file, we calling open function from OS package that opens the named file for reading. If successful, methods on the return file can be used for reading. This function accept file passes input parameter and returns two values. First, an object from file and the other an object from error. So first, go to the main file and create main function func main now we define two variables named file and error for calling the open function from os package file error column equals calling open function from os package and set json file pass as input parameter as a string type configuration slash config dot json first check error status if error not equals nil log dot fatal and error dot error 
we use defer for closing the created file object. So we write defer file dot close. Now create a struct on top of the main method that contains variables equivalent to the keys in the JSON file that are used to map those keys to their data types in Golang. So define a struct like name configuration type configuration struct. driver name and type is a string and using json tag json colon set name driver name and go to the next line and define another key data source name and type is a string using json tag json column and set name data source name now define an object from configuration struct so define a variable like var conf from configuration struct equals configuration. Now using the new decoder function of the JSON package, we send the JSON file to it as a parameter after opening it and through the decode method and reads the next JSON encoded value from its input and it stores in the value pointed to object created from the configuration struct. So go to the main function and after differ file close, we write JSON dot new decoder and set file as parameter dot in decode ampersand conf this allowed us to store the values inside the json file in the variables in the configuration struct we can send parameters to the program at runtime by the console line Flag package has the ability to read and receive these sent parameters and provides them to the program. So in this part, we use the flag package. Go provides a flag package supporting basic command line flag parsing. We will use this package to implement our example command line program. If you remember, in the topic of protocol buffer, we fully explained how to use the flag package. Now let's go to create a flag parameter. First, define a variable and calling a string function from the flag package. A string function defines a string flag with a specified name, default value, and usage a string. The return value is the address of a string variable that stores the value of the flag. First, define a variable like option, colon, equals calling a string function from the flag package flag dot string set a name for the flag for example admin and set a value for the flag for example server and set a description of the flag for the example, communication between server and client. So we register a string flag with a string function, now calling parse function from flag package. Flag 
dot parse. Parse function parses the common line flag from OS arcs. Must be called after all flags are defined and before flags are accessed by the program. Now by inserting a switch, we analyze the value of receive flags and decide what the program will do. For example, what function to call. So we write switch on the option. Define cases for the switch between received flag value. In this step, we want to call the client function if the received value is client and call server function if the received value is server. So we write case client calling run client function if case is client run gRPC client and case is server and calling server function if case is server run gRPC server now we could define a flag and switches between return values now write client and server function in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we could define a flag and switches between return values. And in this session, we want to go to implement the run grp server function. Go to the grp server function. First, display a message that the server is starting. So we write fp starting server. We must tell server to be ready to listen to a port. To do this, we call the listen function from the net package. The listen function announces on the local network address and accepts two parameters as network and address and returns two values and listener and error. So define two variables like listener and error and invoke the listener function. listener and error colon equals invoke listen function from net package net dot listen function set tcp as network parameter tcp for TCP networks, if the host in the address parameter is empty or a literal unspecified IP address, listen function listens on all available unicast and anycast IP addresses of the local system. And set address parameter 127 .0 .0 .0 .1 column for the example port 8085 first check error status if error not equals nil calling fatal function from like package fatal and error dot Now display another message that indicates the server is listening now. So we write fp server is 
listening now we calling new server from grpc package new server function creates a grpc server which has no service registered and has not start to accept request yet this function accepts a list of grpc options as input parameter and return a server from grpc package so before invoking this function we create a variable as array of server options so we write that options array of grpc dot server option now calling new server function from grpc package first define a variable for return value like new server new server colon equals and calling new server function from grpc package grpc dot new server function and set options as parameter now it's time to call the grpc server initializer function from the server package so that we can set the necessary values for our grpc service connection to the database this function accepts two values for connect to the database first driver name and second data source name that we create them to json file and read from the json file and set to the conf object from configuration struct this function returns two values for us first an object from grpc controller and second an error a student server and error colon equals calling grpc server initializer from server package server dot grpc server initializer set driver name from conf object con dot driver name and set data source name from conf dot data source name conf dot data source name first check error status if error not equals name log dot fatal error dot error now it's time to connect the server in the grpc package to the server we created in this case the name of the server we created from the grpc package is new server and the name of the server we created using grpc server initializer is a student server we can establish this connection by calling the register student service server method from the protocol package this function accepts two parameters first an object from service register of the grpc package that registers a service and its implementation to the concrete type implementing this interface and second an object from a student service server of the protocol package so we write protocol dot register student service server set new server object as service register new server and set a student server object as a student service server a student server now we were able to register the servers together it's time for the created server to be ready to listen to the request to do this we call the serve method from server package this function accepts a parameter as listener and return an error value so calling serve method from new server first define a variable like error equals new server and calling serve method and set listener variable as parameter listener 
Server function accepts incoming connections on the listener, creating a new server transport and service go routine for each. The service go routines read gRPC requests and then call the registers handlers to reply to them. Listener will be closed when this method returns. So check error status if error not equals mean. log dot fatal error dot error now we were able to implement the run grpc server function in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
fp one select all students based name and go to the next line and set number two message fp two column select a student based id number and set a message for select number by the user if p backslash n please enter your number Now define a variable for a store value that receive from client by the scanlm function. So we write for the example input colon equals and go to the next line calling scanlm function from fmt package fmt dot scan ln function ampersand input. Suppose that client select number one. So we write statements for selecting number one message. For this purpose, we call equal fold from strings package that reports whether two string parameters interpreted as UTF-8 strings are equal under Unicode case folding, which is a more general form of case insensitivity. So we write if strings dot equal fold and set input and parameter one define a variable for a store name value column equals double quotation mark fmt dot print enter your name and receive name value by calling scanlm function from client fmt dot scanlm function and ampersand and value now set a new line fp now it's time to call and get students by name method from protofine so we call get students by name method from client object we pass two arguments for this method first a context and second an object from search by name message and return a stream of students and or object so define two variables like students and error column equals client dot get students by name calling background function from context as a context argument context dot background and create an instance of search by name struct from protocol package and initialize name value for it as second arguments for the example ampersand protocol dot search by name and set for name value name equals value reformat the code and save the project go to the next line first check error status if error not equals nil like dot fatal error dot error 
we create a for loop and this loop will be able to receive data as long as it is sent from the data server so create for we receive data from server by the receive function first create two variables like student and error colon equals students dot receive function now we want to check and see if the data is still sent to us from the server or not for this purpose we use the end of file from io package so we write if error equals equals io dot end of file if the program enters this block the break command is executed break and check error status if error log dot fatal error dot error and now print the student value fp student and set a new line for display better fp and set return okay reformat the code and save the project now if the client does not select number one the program will not enter the if block and will run from here on or in other words number two has been selected so create a message for entering id value fmt dot print and set message enter your id colon go to the next line receive id value by calling scanln function from client so we write fmt dot scanln and set ampersand input variable and we create a new line for better display fp okay when we receive a parameter from the console this parameter enters the program as a string type and in this case because the type of id is integer and on the other hand the receive parameter is of type string so it is necessary to convert the receive parameter to int value for this purpose calling atoi function from strconf package for casting input string variable to an integer value so define two variable like id and error id comma error colon equals and calling a to i function from strconf package strconf and set input variable okay check error status log dot fatal and set error dot error function okay now it's time to calling get a student by id method from proto file so we call get a student by id method from client object we pass two arguments for this method first context and second an object from search by id message and return a student and error object so define two variables like a student and error a student comma error colon equals and calling get a student by id function from client client dot get a student by id calling background function from context as context argument so I'll write context dot background function and create an instance of search by name id struct from protocol package and initialize id value for it as second arguments so we write ampersand protocol dot search by id and set 
id value for it by casting to int 64 id id and cast to int 64 now check error status if error log dot fatal and set error and display the student value fp a student and we create a new line for better display fp okay now we were able to implement the run grpc client function in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Go programming language course. In the previous session, we were able to implement the run gRPC server and run gRPC client functions. And in this session, we want to run the program. For this purpose, we use two separate terminals to execute the client and server methods. To do this, right click on the one of the package of the project folder and select the revolve file explorer. For the example, right click on the main package and select Revolving File Explorer. In the window that opens, hold down the Shift key and right click and select the Open PowerShell option. Now a new PowerShell terminal opens for us. And do this again. Now another terminal opens for us. Resize the two open terminals inside the skin so we can see both at the same time. Now we use this command to run our program once with the server flag and once with the client flag. For the server we write go run go to main package and main.go file dash admin server. Now we can see the server is running and go to another terminal and run client. Write go run go to package main and main.go file dash admin by the flag client and run. When we run the client-side program, we are asked which option you want to select. There are two options, number one and number two. In option number one, based on a name, it is supposed to show us the list of all the students in the database that have that name. And in option number two, based on an ID number, displays the student information whose ID is equal to the number received. For example, we want to select number 1, so write 1 and press enter. For example, we enter the name David and press enter. David. After entering the name David, the program will show us the list of students whose name is David. Once again, we do this under another name. Select one and press enter. Now enter another name. For example, Jack. 
and we can see the program will show us the list of a student whose name is Jack. Once again, run the client side program and in this time, select the number 2. Select number 2 and press enter. In this case, we are asked to enter an ID number. For example, we enter 5 for ID value and press enter. After entering the ID by the 5 value, the program will show the student information whose ID is equal to number 5. Do again. Select number 2 and enter your ID for the example press 3 and enter now we can see ID equals 3 name David and age 35 in this tutorial we succeed to implement a gRPC service based using protocol buffer and we were able to connect to the database through the gRPC service and run our queries on it First, we created the part related to the database, then we launched our gRPC service, and then we designed the methods related to the server and client part and established their connection with the gRPC service and the database. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about REST APIs concept. What is API? Application Programming Interface or API is a software interface that allows two applications to interact with each other without any user intervention. API is a collection of software functions and procedures. In simple terms, API means a software code that can be accessed or executed. API is defined as a code that helps two different softwares to communicate and exchange data with each other. It offers products or services to communicate with other products and services without having to know how they are implemented. What it actually means is it exposes functionality without exposing internals. If you program in a language that supports writing functions or methods, you would totally understand what I am talking about. In fact, it can be said that using different APIs, two different machines with different operating systems can communicate with each other without any dependency. An API could be a function you wrote or a function from a library or a method from a framework or a HTTP endpoint. API working. Let's see how API works. We use a simple daily life example to understand the concept of API. Imagine you want to go to a restaurant and order your favorite food. First, the waiter comes to you, gives you a menu card and you will provide personalized it order. After some time, you will get your order from the waiter. However, it is not that simple as it looks as there is some process that happens in between. Here, the waiter plays an important part as you will neither go to the kitchen to collect your order nor will you tell the kitchen staff what you want, all this done by the waiter. API also does the same by taking your request and just like the waiter tell the system what you want and give a response back to you. A request is sent from client to server in the form of web URL as HTTP GET or POST or PUT or DELETE request. 
After that, a response comes back from server in the form of a resource which can be anything like HTML, XML, image or JSON. But now JSON is the most popular format being used in web services. Application programming interfaces consist of technical specification pertaining to data exchange option between applications. The applications communicate through a user interface following a process with the application that needs the functionality of the other application calling that application's API and specifying how the functionality should be provided. Assuming the request is authorized, the target application receiving the request returns the functionality. Why would we need an API? Here are some reasons for using API. Application Programming Interface acronym API helps two different softwares to communicate and exchange data with each other. It helps you to embed content from any site or application more efficiently. APIs can access app components. The delivery of services and information is more flexible. Content generated can be published automatically. It allows the user or a company to customize the content and services which they use the most. And software needs to change over time and APIs help to anticipate changes. Features of API Here are some important features of API. It offers a valuable service data function. It helps you to plan a business model. Simple, flexible, quickly adopted, managed and measured, and offers great developer support. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about REST API's concept. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's concept. Types of APIs. In terms of release policies, APIs can be private, partner, and public. Private APIs. These application software interfaces are designed for improving solutions and services within an organization. In-house developers or contractors may use these APIs to integrate a company's IT system or applications, build new systems or customer-facing apps leveraging existing systems. Even if apps are publicly available, the interface itself remains available only for those working directly with the APR publisher. The private strategy allows a company to fully control the API usage. Partner APIs Partner APIs are only apparently prompt but shared with business partners who have signed an agreement with the publisher. The common use case for partner APIs is software integration between two parties. A company that grants partners with access to data or capability benefits from extra revenue streams. At the same time, it can monitor how the exposed digital assets are used, ensure whether third-party solutions using their APIs provide decent user experience and maintain corporate identity in their apps. Public APIs Also known as developer facing or external, these APIs are available for any third party developers. A public API program allows for increasing brand assurance and receiving an additional source of income when properly executed. These are two types of public APIs, open and commercial ones. 
The Open API definition suggests that all features of such an API are public and can be used without restrictive terms and conditions. For instance, it's possible to build an application that utilizes the API without explicit approval from the API supplier or mandatory license fees. The definition also states that the API description and any related documentation must be openly available and the API can be freely used to create and test applications. API use cases APIs can be classified according to the systems for which they are designed. Database APIs Database APIs enable communication between an application and a database management system. Developers work with the database by running queries to access data, change tables, and etc. The Drupal 7 database API, for example, allows users to write unified queries for different databases, both proprietary and open source. Another example is OR's database API, which is embedded into Oracle REST data services. Operating Systems APIs This group of APIs defines how applications use the resources and services of operating systems. Every OS has its sets of APIs, for instance Windows API or Linux API, like Kernel, User Spaces API and Kernel Internal API. Apple provides API reference for Mac OS and iOS in its developer documentation. APIs for building applications for Apple's Mac OS desktop operating system are included in Cocoa set of developers tools. Remote APIs Remote APIs define standards of interaction for applications running on different machines. In other words, one software product accesses resources located outside the device that requests them, which explains the name. Since two remotely located applications are connected over a communications network, particularly the Internet, most remote APIs are written based on web standards. Web APIs this API class is the most common. Web APIs provide machine-readable data and functionality transfer between web-based systems which represent client-server architecture. These APIs mainly deliver requests from web applications and responses from server using Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. Developers can use web APIs to extend the functionality of their apps or sites. Two types of web APIs are first server side. Server side web API is a programmatic interface that consists of one or more public exposed endpoints to a defined request response message system. It is typically expressed in JSON or XML. Client side. A client side web API is a programmatic interface helps to extend functionality within a web browser or other HTTP client. Examples of web API like Google Maps APIs allow developers to embed Google Maps on web pages by using a JavaScript or Flash interface. YouTube API allows developers to integrate YouTube videos and functionality into websites or applications. Twitter offers two APIs. The REST APIs helps developers to access Twitter data and the Search API provides methods for developers to interact with Twitter search. And Amazon's API gives developers access to Amazon's product selection. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. 
In the previous session, we talked about APIs, and in this session, we want to talk about the others concept. API specifications and protocols. The goal of API specifications is to standardize data exchange between web services. In this case, a standardization means that the ability of diverse systems written in different programming languages and or running on different OSs or using different technologies to seamlessly communicate with each other. Remote Processor Call or RPC Web APIs may adhere to resource exchange principles based on a remote processor call. This protocol specifies the interaction between client-server-based applications. One program, client, requests data or functionality from another program, server, located in another computer on a network, and the server sends the required response. RPC is also known as a subroutine or function call. One of two ways to implement a remote processor call is swap. Service Object Access Protocol or SWAP SWAP is a lightweight protocol for exchanging structured information in decentralized, distributed environment according to the definition by Microsoft that developed it. Generally speaking, this specification contains the syntax rules for requests and response messages sent by web applications. APIs that comply with the principles of SWAP enable XML messaging between systems through HTTP or Simple Mail Transfer Protocol or SMTP for transferring mail. Extensible Markup Language or XML is a simple and very flexible text format widely used for data storage and exchange over the internet or other networks. XML defines a set of rules for encoding documents in a format that both humans and machines can read. The markup language is a collection of symbols that can be placed in the text to delineate and label the parts of the text documents. XML text documents contain self-descriptive tags of data objects, which makes them easily readable. Swap is mostly used with the enterprise web-based software to ensure high security of transmitted data. Swap APIs are preferred among providers of payment gateways, identity management and CRM solutions, as well as financial and telecommunication services. PayPal's public API is one of the commonly known swap APIs. It's also frequently used for legacy system support. Representational State Transfer or REST The term REST was introduced by commuter scientist Roy Fielding in a distillation in 2000. Unlike SWAP, which is a protocol, REST is a software architectural style with six constraints for building applications that work over HTTP, often web services. The World Wide Web is the most common realization and application of the architecture style. REST is considered a simpler alternative to SWAP which made developers find difficult to use because it requires writing a lot of code, complete every text, and following the XML structure for every message sent. In this course, we want to explore REST technology. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about API specification and protocols. And in this session, we want to talk about the other concept. 
REST API Representational State Transfer or REST is an architectural style that defines a set of constraints to be used for creating web services. REST API is a way of accessing web services in a simple and flexible way without having any processing. REST technology is generally preferred to the more robust simple object access protocol swap technology because REST uses less bandwidth, simple and flexible, making it more suitable for internet usage. It's used to fetch or give some information from a web service. All communication done via REST API uses only HTTP requests. REST follows another logic since it makes data available as resources. Each resource is represented by a unique URL and one can request this resource by providing its URL. Web APIs that comply with REST architectural constraints are called RESTful APIs. Building RESTful web services like other programming skills is part art, part science. As the internet industry progresses, creating a REST API becomes more concrete with emerging best practices. RESTful systems support messaging in different formats such as a plain text, HTML, XML, and JSON while Swap only allows XML. The ability to support multiple formats for storing and exchanging data is one of the reasons REST is a prevailing in choices for building public APIs these days. Social media games and travel companies provide external APIs to improve their brand visibility even more. Twitter has numerous RESTful APIs. Expedia has both Swap and RESTful APIs for its partners. If you consider redefining your travel and hospitality business offering, dive deep into the world of travel and booking APIs with our dedicated article. JavaScript object notation or JSON is a lightweight and easy to parse text format for data exchange. Its syntax is based on a subset of the standard ECMA-262 third edition. Each JSON file contains collections of name and value pairs and ordered lists of values. Since these are universal data structures, the format can be used with any programming language. HTTP verbs These are some conventions HTTP APIs follow. These are actually not part of REST specification, but we need to understand these to fully utilize REST API. HTTP defines a set of request methods to indicate the desired action to be performed for a given resource. Also, they can also be nouns. These request methods are sometimes referred as HTTP verbs. Each of them implements a different semantic, but some common features are shared by a group of them, e.g. a request method can be safe or catchable. GET The HTTP GET method is used to read or retrieve a representation of a resource. In the save pass, GET returns a representation in XML or JSON and a HTTP response code of 200. In an error case, it must often returns, for example, 400 bad request error. POST The POST verb is most often utilized to create new resources. In particular, it's used to create subordinate resources that is subordinate to some other, e.g. parent resource. Unsuccessful creation return HTTPS status 201 returning a location header with a link to the newly created resource with the 201 HTTPS status. PUT It is used for updating the capabilities. However, PUT can also be used to create a resource in the case where the resource ID is chosen by the client instead of by the server. 
In other words, if the put is to a URL that contains the value of a non extensive resource ID, a successful update returns 200 from a put. If using put for create return HTTP status 201 and successful creation. Patch. It is used for modifying capabilities. The patch request only needs to contain the changes to the resource, not the complete resource. This resembles put, but the body contains a set of instructions describing how a resource currently residing on the server should be modified to produce a new version. Delete. It is used to delete a resource identified by a URL. A successful deletion return HTTP status 200 along with response body. Connect. The connect method establishes the tunnel of the server identified by the target resource. Head. The head method asks for a response identical to that of a get request but without the response body. Trace. The trace method performs a message loopback test along the path to the target resource. Options. The options method is used to describe the communication options for the target resource. Terminologies. The following are the most important terms related to REST APIs. Resource. Resource is an object or representation of something which has some associated data with it and there can be set of methods to operate on it, e.g. animals, schools, and employees are resources and delete and update are the operations to be performed on the resources. Collections Collections are set of resources, e.g. companies in the collection of company resource and URL or uniform resource locator is a path through which a resource can be located and some actions can be performed on it. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about REST API, and in this session, we want to talk about the other concept. API endpoints. This is what an API endpoints look like. HTTPS colon s slash s slash www.soft.com s slash Golang slash go slash search question mark w equals http and type equals comments this url can be broken into these parts that you can see in the below table protocol how the browser or client should communicate with the server subdomain subdivision of the main domain domain Unique reference to identify website on the internet. Port. Port on the server the application is running on. By default is AT, so most cases we don't see it. Path. Path parameters in a REST API represent resources. Query. Queries are key value pairs of information used mostly for filtering purposes. Headers. This was not part of the URL itself, but header is a part of network component sent by the client or the server. Based on who sends it, there are two kinds of header, request header and response header. Body. You can add extra information to both the request to the server and the response from the server. The response type. Usually JSON or XML. Nowadays, it's mostly JSON. REST API with Golang. If you are writing REST API, why should you choose Golang? It's compiled so you get small binaries. It's fast, 
slower than C or C++ or Rust, but faster than most other web programming languages. It is simple to understand and it works really well in the microservices world for reason number one. In this training course, to implement RESTful API in the Go programming language, we use the Gorilla Max tools. Gorilla Max. Gorilla is a web toolkit for the Go programming language, and Gorilla Max is a powerful URL router and dispatcher. Package Gorilla Max implements a request router and dispatcher for matching incoming requests to their respective handler. Net HTTP package built in methods are great. We can write a server with no external libraries, but Net in HTTP package has limitations. This is a very popular library that works very well in my package and helps us if you let's do something that is a relative API. There is no direct way to handle path parameters, just like request methods, we have to handle path and query parameters manually. Gorilla Max is a very popular library that works really well and helps us a few things that makes API building a breeze. The name Max stands for HTTP Request Multiplexer. Installation Gorilla Max. Run go get pointing to a package, for example, for install Gorilla Max, run below command in terminal. The main features are it implements the HTTP handler interface, so it is compatible with the standard HTTP serve Max. Requests can be matched based on URL, host, path, path prefix, schemas, header and query values, HTTP methods or using custom methods. URL hosts, paths and query values can have variables with an optional regular expression. Registered URLs can be built or reserved, which helps maintaining references to resources. And routes can be used as subrouters. Nested routes are only tested if the parent route matches. It is useful to define groups of routes that are common conditions like a host, a path prefix, or other repeated attributes. As a bonus, this optimizes request matching. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about REST API's concept and in this session, we want to talk about the other concept. Now it's time to do a project in this session. To practice this section, we want to establish a connection between the client and the server and the database through the REST APIs in Golang. It is important to note that the client cannot communicate directly with the database, but the client is connected to the server and the server is directly connected to the database. The client sends its request to the server and the server analyzes them and sends the appropriated request to the database and receives the response from the database and sends its response to the client. This program consists of two main layers, a database layer and a REST layer. In this example, we have person database that contains a student table which contains table information like ID, name, and age that we have to perform crowd operation using MySQL database. Therefore, we will use the student table in the person database that we created in previous courses to connect to the Go program. Now let's go to VS Code program to implement this project. First, go to Package Explorer and go to a SRC folder and create a project folder named like REST. Package 
Because in this tutorial, we use MySQL database, we need a driver to connect to MySQL. So first, we should prepare and install MySQL driver in our project. So run the MySQL driver installation command in terminal. First, go to project folder, cd rest, go get dash u github dot com slash go dash sql dash driver slash my sql okay the driver has installed it's time go to create database layer so go to project folder and create another folder named like database database we want to create the database connection settings as a json file so go to the database folder and create another folder named like configuration configuration and inside the configuration folder we create a file called config with the json extension which is supposed to include the settings for the connection of the go program with the mysql database config.json The program requires two main settings to connect to the database. First is driver name and second is data source name. Driver name is MySQL and data source name is a combination of username, password and database name that we want to connect it. The pattern of the data source name is database username column, database password, at sign slash database name so we write a json file for settings of database curly braces driver name column in this case my driver name is mysql set comma and go to the next line and data source name data source name column my database username is root and my database password here is oracle at sign yes, slash and database name is person now we could create a json file for connection to mysql database save it it's time go to create a model so in database folder create another folder named like model model in model folder we create a file like named student.go inside it and we are going to create a structure equivalent to a student table in mysql database so create a file like a student dot go so go to a student file and create a strike name a student with fields such as fields stored inside the mysql database so write package model type student extract set a comment for this extract as exporter student and define fields id type is int name type is a string and age type is 
int. Okay, now it's time to implement database methods. In project folder, go to database layer and create another folder named like DB tools and create a file inside it like name dbconnection.go that file contains methods to interact with the database create a folder like db tools and create a file like db connection db connection.go before creating any connection there are two things to do First, import MySQL driver top of database tools package. So we write package database import underline github.com slash go dash SQL dash driver slash my SQL second define global variable named driver name and data source name as a string type var driver name a string and var data source name as a string Now create an initializer function to be able to initialize these two variables from other packages. This method receives two values of driver name and data source name as input parameters and uses them to initialize the global variable of package until that other function can access their values. So we write func db initialize dn as driver name and dsn as driver source name by the type s string initialize the global variable plus this variable driver name equals dn and in the next line data source name equals dsn now we want to design a method whose task is to connect the program to the mysql database and return a database object from sql package for example we create a function named connect that start by the lowercase character because we want to use this function just to this package and we don't use it to other package so we write func connect and return type is db object by the type sql db db pointer of sql dot db the required method to connect to the database is the open function of the sql package so we should import the sql package open function opens a database specified by its database driver name and a driver specific data source name usually consisting of at least a database name and connection information and it returns db object and error so first define two variables like db and error colon equals and calling open function from sql package and set driver name and data source name and parameters sql.open and set driver name and data source name now check error status if 
error not equals nil lock dot fatal error dot error and return create db object as return type return db okay in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define connect method for connection to the database and in this session, we want to create another functions to perform CRUD operations. First, we start by writing the queries related to the select statement. So create a function to select all the student's records and return a student array. So we write Funk select all students and return type array of model dot a student. Now calling connect function for initializing MySQL driver name and data source name. This function returns a DB object from SQL package, which gives us access to methods contained in the package to perform CRUD operations. So define a variable like DB colon equals and invoking connect function. After creating a DB object, we invoke query method that it executes a query that accepts a SQL query statement as a string parameter and returns rows and error objects. So first define two variables like rows and error colon equals db dot query. In this case, we want to see all students in a student table. So we should use select query statement. So we write select query as a string parameter. Select a star from student. Go to the next line, check error status. If error log dot fatal error dot error. We use defer for closing the created db object. Defer db dot close. We create a list of a student struct to add to each new student that is read from the database, from the student table. And at the end of fetching data from the database, the student list is displayed by the method return value. So define the variables like students colon equals model dot student. Now put the return value of the query inside a for loop to access each of the rows by the next function. So we write for rows dot next. Next function prepares the next result row for reading with the scan method. If returns true and success or false if there is no next result row or an error happened while preparing it. So we create an object from a student destruct, a student colon equal model dot a student and calling a scan method on rows result to read records one by one. Scan copies the columns in the current row into the values pointed at by destination. The number of values in destination must be the same as the number of the columns in rows. Define an error variable and invoke scan function. 
error equals rose dot scan set a student id as pointer ampersand student dot id set a student name ampersand student dot name and set a student age as pointer ampersand student dot h scan converts columns read from the database into the following common go types and a special type provided by the sql package so check error status if error not equals nil lock dot fata error dot error and continue Now we add each reader record that contains a student to the list of students by the append function. Students equals append function a students a student. Now return a student list as return values of function. Return a students. Now we could define a function named select all students that fetch all students of a student table in person database by the select statement. Now we want to create another select function. In this case, we want to fetch a student by a condition otherwise we create a query by work loss. For this sample, we want to define a function that returns a student base student name. First, define a function name, select a student base name, the tag set, an string parameter as name, and return a student base that name value. So we write func select a student based name and set a name as a parameter by the type a string name. S string and return value is model dot student. Now calling connect function for initializing MySQL driver. So define a variable like db colon equals connect. After creating a db object, we invoke query row method that it executes a query that is expected to return at most one row. Query row method always returns a non nil value. So define rows variable and calling query row method. Rows colon equals db dot query row. In this case, we want to select a student in a student table by based on the given name. And we should use select query statement via workloads and so write select query as a string parameter. Select a star from a student and set where close condition based name where name instead of name value put a question mark equals question mark and as a second parameter we receive the name value from the inside the method so we write name. We use defer for closing the created db object defer db dot close now we create an object from a student struct a student colon equals model dot a student and calling scan method on rows result to read record Define an error variable and invoke scan functions. So we write error colon equals rows dot scan. Set a student ID as pointer ampersand student dot ID and a student name ampersand student name and age ampersand student dot age. S can converse columns read from the database into the following common go types and the special type provided by SQL package. 
So first check error status. If error not equals nil, like dot fata error dot error. Now return a student as return value of function. If the student is not available, the null value will be returned with the select name. Return a student. Okay. Now we could define a function name select a student based name that return a student of a student table in person database by the select a statement based name value. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we could define two types of select methods. And in this session, we want to create another CRUD functions. First, we want to create a function to insert a new student in a student table in person database. So define a function name save that accepts a student object as parameter and if the addition of a student to the database is done correctly, the ID of the last added student will be returned as return type. So we write func save and set a student as a parameter. A student model dot student and return type is int 64. Now calling connect function for initializing MySQL driver name and data source name. So first define a variable like dv colon equals and calling connect function. We use defer for closing the created db object. Defer db dot close. After creating a db object, we invoke prepare method that creates a prepared statement for layer queries or executions. Multiple queries or executions may be run concurrently from the returned statement. The caller must call the statement's close method when the statement is no longer needed. This function returns two values. First, stmt object from SQL package, that is a prepared statement, and the other is error. So define two variables like save comma error colon equals db dot prepare and write suitable query for created a new object insert into student id name age values question mark question mark and question mark now check error status if error not equals nil lock dot fatal error dot error now calling exec method from a SQL package and executes a prepared statement with the given arguments and returns a result summarizing the effect of the statement. This method returns two values, first an object of result interface and the other is error. So define two variables like result, comma, error, colon, equals, save dot, zek, and set a student fields as arguments instead of question marks in prepare statement sequentially like a student dot id student dot name and student dot h now check error status if error not equals need log dot fatal Error dot error. Now calling last inserted ID function from SQL package that returns the integer generated by the database in response to a comment. Typically this will be from an auto increment column when inserting a new row. 
This function returns two value, first an int 64 value and the other is error. So write two variables like student ID comma error colon equals result dot last insert ID. Now check error status if error not equals mean log dot fatal error dot error. Now set a student ID as return type of save function. Return student ID. Reformat the code and save the project. Now we could define a function name save that accepts a student object as parameter and save it as a record into the student table in person database and returns the ID generated of the added new record by database. Now we want to create another function. In this case, we want to create a function to update a student in a student table in person database. First, define a function name update that accepts a student object as a parameter and returns the number of rows affected. So we write func update set a student variable from the student struct model dot student and return in 64 now calling connect function for initializing mysql driver name so define a variable like db colon equals and invoking connect function and set defer for closing the created db object defer db dot close after creating a DB object from a SQL package, we invoked prepare method that creates a prepare statement for later queries or executions. First, a STMT object from a SQL package that is prepare statement, and the other is error. So define two variables like update comma error colon equals DB dot prepare and write suitable query for update and object. Update student set name equals question mark h equals question mark and set condition where id equals question mark now check error status if error not equals nil log dot fatal error dot error now calling exec method from a SQL package and executes a prepare statement with the given arguments and returns a result summarizing the effect of the statement. This method returns two values. First, an object of result interface and the other is error. So define two variables like result and error colon equals update dot exec. Set a student fields as parameter instead question marks in prepare statement sequentially. A student dot name, comma, student dot age, and for ID we set a student dot i. Now check error status. If error not equals nil, log dot fatal, error dot error. Now calling rows affected function from a SQL package that returns the number of rows affected by an update, insert, or delete. Not every database or database driver may support this. This function returns two values. First, an n64 value and the other is error. So define two variables like rows affected and row colon equals result dot rows affected check the error status if error not equals nil log dot fatal error dot error so we define rows affected variable by the int 64 as return value return rows affected okay we format the code and save the project now we could define a function name update that accept a student object as parameter and update that record into the student table in person database and returns the rows affected numbers now we want to create another function 
In this case, we want to create a function to delete a student from a student table in person database. So define a function name delete that receives the ID of the record to be deleted as an input parameter and delete the record from the database and returns the number of rows affected. So we write func delete define a variable like id by the type int as parameter and int64 as return value calling connect function for initializing mysql driver name and data source name so define a variable like db colon equals and invoking connect function and set differ for closing the created db object differ db close after creating a db object we invoke prepare method that creates a prepare statement for later queries or executions so define two variables like delete comma error colon equals db dot prepare and write suitable query for delete an object delete from a student set condition where id equals question mark and check error status if error not equals mean log dot fatal error dot error now calling exec method from a SQL package and executes a prepare statement with the given arguments and returns a result summarizing the effect of the statement. So define two variables like result and error colon equals delete dot exec and set a student ID as condition for where close that will receive it as input parameter instead question marks in prepare statement ID. Now check error status if error not equals nil like dot fatal error dot error. Now calling rows affected function that returns the number of rows affected by an update insert or delete. So define a variable like rows affected and error colon equals result dot rows affected now check error status if error not equals nil like that fatal error dot error so we define rows affected variable by the in 64 as return value return rows affected okay reformat the code and save the project now we could define a function named delete that accept a student id as parameter and delete that record from the student table in person database and returns the rows affected number in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we have been able to design the database layer. Now it's time to create the REST APIs layer. Before implementing the REST layer, you must first install Gorilla Max tool. To do this, go to the terminal and execute the following command. Go get dash u github dot com slash gorilla slash max okay the gorilla max package was installed and now we will continue so go to project folder and create another folder named like rest layer which is supposed to include the REST files for the connection of the Go program with the REST APIs. Create a folder, REST layer. 
This layer consists of two parts. One part is related to REST configuration and the other part is related to REST functions. First, we create the file related to the REST functions. So go to project folder and go to REST layer and create a Golang file named like restfunctions.go. Create a file restfunctions.go. Set package name, package, rest, layer. First, we implement a function that is supposed to take the name of a student through the endpoint. Then search it in the database and if that student exists, return the information of that student to us. So define a function name like select the student base name. Func select a student based name this function acts at two parameters first an object from the http response writer and second a pointer of http request so we write response as http dot response writer and set a pointer parameter as HTTP request request as pointer of HTTP dot request now we want to implement the body of the function this function is supposed to return the information of a student based on the name it receives from that endpoint. So to access the parameters in the URL, we have to do this using mocks. So we write mocks and calling vars function and set request as parameter for it. Vars and set request as parameter for it. Vars function returns the road variables for the current request. For example, in this case, our endpoint parameter is name that defined in REST config router. The return value of this function is a map whose key is the name of the parameters in the endpoint and its value is the value based on which the key is to be returned. So define a variable like vars as return type. So define a variable like vars colon equals. Now all the keys in the endpoint are inside the vars variable. We can access their values by calling each key. In this example, we have defined only one parameter as name in our URL. So there is only one name key inside the vars variable, which we can display the value of that key as follows. First, define two variables for return types like name and OK. So we write name, comma, OK, colon equals, calling vars variable, vars, and set endpoint parameter as index for it. In this case, our URL parameter name is name. Okay, this value of the variable okay indicates the presence or absence of a return value. If okay returns the true value, it means that the return value exists. And if it returns the false value, it means that the key has no value. Therefore, we check the value in the key through the variable OK. And if it does not exist, we should send an error message to the client. So we write if not OK, response dot calling write header function and set a status code. Right header, right 
header. For example, a status bad request from the HTTP package. HTTP dot status bad request. Write header function sends a HTTP response header with the provided status code and calling fprintln function for displaying an error to client fmt dot fprint ln and send response and set for example a student not found Now it's time to connect to the database. Then call the query to call the student base search by name and fetch the return value which is a student. So we define a variable like a student student colon equals db tools dot and from the db tools invoking select the student base name function. Select A student based name function and set name as argument for it name now we have to send the return value of the select method to the client which is an object from the student but you have to convert the object to JSON and send it to the client as JSON format that do this through the JSON package so we write JSON dot calling new encoder function and set response as parameter for it new encoder and set response as argument for it this function returns a new encoder that writes to writer and calling encode function and set a student as argument for it dot encode set a student as argument this function writes the json encoding of a student object to the stream followed by a new line character so we were able to implement the method of selecting a student based on name from the database and sending it into the client via rest api in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we could define select a student based name function for REST layer. And now it's time to implement another function that is supposed to fetch all students from a student table of person database. So define a function named like select all students. This function accepts two parameters, first an object from HTTP response writer and second a pointer of HTTP request. So we write func select all students set a parameter as response writer response HTTP dot response writer and set a pointer parameter as HTTP request request pointer HTTP dot request Now we want to implement the body of the function. This function is supposed to return the information of all students based on the end point. Now first connect to the database, 
then call the query to count select all students so we define a variable like students colon equals calling db tools and from the db tools invoking select all student function dot select all students now we have to send the return value of the select method to the client which is an object from the student list but you have to convert the object to json and send it to the client as json format that do this through the json package so we write json and calling new encoder function in set response as parameter for it new encoder and set response as parameter for it this function returns a new encoder that writes to writer and calling encode function and set a student as parameter for it encode and set students as arguments for it okay reformat the code and save the projects so we were able to implement the methods of select all students from the database and sending it to the client via REST API. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define select all students method for rest layer. And now we want to implement another function that is supposed to insert a student in a student table of person database. So define a function named like save a student. This function accepts two parameters. First, an object from HTTP response writer and second, a pointer of HTTP request. So we write func save student and set two parameters. First, a parameter as response writer, response. By the type HTTP dot response writer and second request from pointer of HTTP dot request. Now we want to implement the body of this function. This function is supposed to save a new student in database. So we should convert the data received from the endpoint into a student object and save it in the database. To do this, we do the following. First, create an object of a student model. So define a variable like a student from model a student. Therefore, we receive the data sent from the client through the body in the request by the new decoder function from JSON package and store it into a student object. This function returns a new decoder that reads from reader. So first define an error variable as return type error colon equals and calling new decoder function JSON dot new decoder function and set body of request as argument request dot body as argument and calling decode function dot decode and store the received data into a student model ampersand a student Now check the error status, so we write if error not equals nil, 
for example fp arrow and set an error status in response header and display it for client by the fprintf function so we write response dot write header and select an error status as argument from the http package for example http dot uh, status internal server error status internal server error and display it for client by calling fmt.fprintf function set response as first argument set message for example could not add new student by error colon percent v and set error variable and uh, set a return value return now connect to the database then call the query to save a new student so we write db tools and calling save function and set a student as argument for this function student we format the code and save the project now we were able to implement the same function that add a new student into the database based data receiving from client via rest api in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define a save a student function for REST layer. And now it's time to implement another function that is supposed to update exists a student from person database. So define a function named like update a student. This function accepts two parameters, first an object from HTTP response writer and second a pointer of HTTP request. So we write func update a student set two parameters first response from HTTP dot response writer and second request as pointer of HTTP dot request. Now we want to implement the body of the function. This function is supposed to update exist a student in database. So we should convert the data received from the endpoint into a student object and save it in the database. To do this, we do the following. First, create an object of a student model var a student model of a student therefore we receive the data sent from the client through the body in the request by the new decoder function from json package and store it into a student object this function returns a new decoder that reads from reader so first define an error variable as return type error colon equals json dot new decoder and set body of request as argument request body and uh, calling decode function decode function and store the received data into a student model ampersand student now check the error status so we write if error not equals nil fp error 
and set an error status in response header and display it for client by the fprintf function. So we write response dot write header select an error status uh, for example http dot uh, status internal server status internal server error and display it for client by the calling fmt dot fprintf function first set response second parameter set uh, a message for example put not update student by error percent we and set error variable and set a return value return okay now connect to the database then call the query to update a student so we write db tools and calling update function update and set a student as argument for this function student okay reformat the code and save the project now we were able to implement the update function that update a next student from the database based data receiving from client via rest api okay in this session, we were able to implement the necessary functions to connect the REST APIs to the database. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we were able to implement the REST functions. And now it's time to implement the configurations related to REST API. So go to Project Folder and go to REST Layer and create a Golang file named like REST Config. So go to REST layer, create a new file like REST config. First set package name, package REST layer. First we create and implement a method that is responsible for create different routers to respond to different URL requests or endpoints. So create a method named like rest config. This function accepts a rotor object from max package as input parameter. So we write func rest config and set rotor as parameter from pointer of max rotor. Router registers routes to be matched and dispatches a handler. It implements the HTTP handler interface so it can be registered to serve requests. Now we want to define an endpoint as prefix or a fixed value that exists in all endpoints for REST. So from the rotor object we call the get prefix method and set our fixed endpoint in it. So first define a variable like rest rotor, rest router, column equals from rotor object column pass prefix function rotor dot pass prefix function. For example, we set s slash rest s slash api as fixed endpoint in all requests set s slash rest s slash api 
and then calling sub rotor function dot sub rotor sub rotor function creates a sub rotor for the road it will test the inner rows only if the parent road matched so we were able to define a common endpoint as a prefix for our request now we want to create different endpoints suppose we want to return all students of a student table from person database by calling an endpoint or url to do this we do the following calling methods function from the created rest rotor for set type of requests method function registers a new route with a matcher for http methods in this case we want to use get request type so we write rest rotor dot methods and set get as a request type and calling path function path function adds a matter for the url path it accepts a template with zero or more url variables enclosed by curly braces the template must start with a slash and variable names must be unique in a given route in this case for fetch all students we set a path like a slash student so we write dot path and set a slash students and then calling handler function dot handler func this function sets a handler function for the route now we need to give a function handler as a parameter to this method and say what is going to do for us now pass a function handler from rest function file as argument in this case we want to fetch all students so we invoke select all students function select all students function so we were able to create an endpoint to fetch all students from a student table of the person database now we create another endpoint to fetch the student base name from the database to do this we do the following calling methods function from the created rest rotor for set type of request rest rotor dot methods type of the request in this case is get set path in this case for fetch a student base its name we set a path like a slash a student a slash curly braces and set the name, name variable as parameter so we write a slash student a slash curly braces set a variable as parameter for example in this case we set name and calling handler function in this case we want to fetch a student base its name so we invoke select a student base name function as handler function select a student base name so we were able to create a named point to fetch a student base its name from a student table of the person database now create another endpoint for example to save a new student into person database so go to the next line calling methods function from rest rotor rest rotor dot methods in this case we want to use post as request type and calling path function so we write post as request type and calling path function we want to insert a new student so we set a path like a slash student a slash at a slash student a slash at 
and calling handle function we need to give a function handler as a parameter in this case we want to save a new student so we invoke save a student function save a student function so we were able to create an endpoint to save a new student and now we want to create another endpoint to update exist student into person database so calling metas function from rest rotor rest rotor dot metas function and in this case we use from post as a request type post calling path function We want to update a new student, so we set a path like a slash student a slash edit a slash student a slash edit and invoke a handler function. In this case, we want to update an exist student, so we invoke update a student function from rest functions update student. Okay, we format the code and save the project. Now we were able to implement the REST config methods to create different rotors like save, update, and select. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we were able to implement the REST config function and could define four endpoints for calling REST API. And in this session, we want to continue the other concept. For example, if we want to call the REST API related to calling all the students, we have to do the following. We put this line inside the comment. This endpoint is for calling all students. First, define domain. Because we want to call the project on our machine, we use localhost as domain. So we write localhost colon set port 8080 and set path prefix slash rest slash api and set path of calling all the students api in this case is a slash students a slash a student so we could create a rest api for calling all the students from database local host colon 8080 slash rest slash api slash student and we also write these endpoints for other apis for example for select a student based name we can write local host colon 8080 slash path prefix rest api and path uh, for select a student based name is a slash a student a slash name a slash a student a slash name and for add a new student to the database we can write local host colon 8080 a slash rest slash api as path prefix and path for save a new student is a slash a student a slash at a slash a student a slash at and api for the update we can write local host colon 8080 a slash path prefix is rest 
slash API and path for update student is slash student slash edit student slash edit okay now we should implement a method that is responsible for running the rest service on the server so create a method named like rest start find rest start this function accept a string parameter as main address for example in this case our address is localhost so set a parameter like endpoint by the type a string and return an error object as return type error this function is supposed to call the rest config method to call the rest config method you need a rotor as the input parameter so we first create a new rotor define a variable like rotor colon equals calling new rotor function from max package max dot new rotor now we could create a rotor so calling rest config function and set created rotor as argument for it rest config and set rotor as argument for it now write return for the function so we calling listen and serve function from http package return http dot listen and serve function this function accept two arguments first is endpoint and second is a handler so we set endpoint and router okay we were able to make a configuration for the rest layer first create a rest config function that contains uh, four endpoint uh, first for select all students okay this passes api slash students okay and api student for select a student based name rest api for add a student and rest api for edit a student and define another function like rest start that is responsible for running the rest service on the server in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue with the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
error 5 comma error colon equals and calling open function from OS package now set JSON file path as input argument as a string type data base configuration and config dot json file now check error status if error not equals nil log dot fatal error dot error we use defer for closing the created file object defer file dot close now create a struct on top of the main method that contains variables equivalent to the keys in the json file that are used to map those keys to their data types in golang so define a struct like name configuration go top of the main function type configuration struct driver name driver name type is a string using json tag j song colon and set name driver name driver name and again for data source name data source name type is a string and using json tag json column and set name data source name data source name now create an object from configuration struct so define a variable like conf go after defer conf colon equals new configuration struct now using the new decoder function of the json package we send the json file to it as a parameter after opening it and through the decode method in read the next json encoded value from its input and stores it in the value pointed to object created from the configuration struct so we write json dot new decoder set file as argument and calling decode function and set conf as argument for it this allowed us to assert the values inside the json file in the variables in the configuration struct now it's time to call the db initialize method from the db tools package to connect to the database db tools dot db initialize and set driver name from the conf object conf dot driver name and set data source name conf dot data source name each of the current methods uses a method called connect to communicate with the database which requires two parameters that we were able to inject into the db tools package okay necessary conditions for communication with mysql database are provided now it's time to run our server by calling rest start function from the rest layer so we write rest layer dot rest start function 
and set localhost IPS argument for it. 127.0.0.1 column and set 8080 as port. Okay, now the server is ready to listen to client requests. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we were able to make the configurations related to the server and set it up. In this session, we intend to send several REST endpoints from the client to the server. To do this, we use Postman software. But before doing it, we should run the main method of the project. By calling the main method, the server is started and in the mode of listening to different requests to respond appropriately. So first, run the main function. Go run dot backslash main dot go. Now server is running on the local host on port 8080. Postman is an API development tool which helps to build, test and modify APIs. Almost any functionality that could be needed by any developer is encapsulated in this tool. It has the ability to make various types of HTTP requests like GET, POST, PUT, PATCH, saving environments for later use, converting the API to code for various languages. Before running the APIs inside Postman software, we first enter the MySQL database and check the lists of a student person schema. Go to the person schema, go to the tables and go to a student table, right click on it and select rows. Now we can see we have five records here. John, Linda, Jack, David, and Mary. Now go to REST config file and check the created APIs. Go to REST config. Okay. Here we have created four different API. One to select all students. One to select a student based on the name. One to create a new student. And one to update the student information. So, in the Postman program, we can use these four APIs as client-side requests. It's time to go to the Postman to execute our REST APIs. Click on the plus sign and enter our request URL in text field, then select your method and execute the API. Suppose we want to see first the list of all students. To do this, we need to call the API for selecting all students. So first click on the plus sign and in text field, we write our REST API. For select all students, we write local host column 8080 slash REST slash API and slash students. Then the method defined for this API is get. So select get method from methods drop down. By default here is get. And now send the request from client into the server. Now we can see the output. We see all the students of a student table by calling rest API. ID 1, John, age 40, id 5 named Linda, id 8 named Jack, id 9 named David, and id 10 named Mary. Do this again for another request. In this case, we want to see a student base its name. To do this, we need to call the API for select a student base name. So we write local host column 8080 slash rest slash api slash student 
and slash its name for example jack the method is get and press send button now we can see the information of the jack student id 8 name jack and age 25 do this again for other requests in this case we want to save a new student to database to do this, we need to call the API for save a student. So click on the plus sign, write localhost column 80, 80, slash rest, slash API, and slash student, slash at. Select the body tab below where to enter the API. Then select the row option and change its value from text to JSON. Now enter the information of a student in JSON format in the box below and send it to the server. So put the curly braces and initialize a student field between them. Note that the ID value will be added automatically to the database. So for example, curly braces for name we write Kim and set a comma go to the next line and for age we set for example 33 and the method defined for this API is POST so select POST method from method dropdowns POST and send the request from client to the server now go to the database and select all the students again run the query again now we can see the output we see that a new student has been added to the list id 13 name kim and age 33 do this again for other requests now go to the postman and continue in this case we want to update an next student to database to do this we need to call the api for update a student so we write localhost column 8080 as server IP slash rest slash API as path prefix slash student slash edit as path now we want to update a student that we inserted in the previous calling API so go to database and see its ID the ID of the key is 13 Go to the post name and continue. We write ID column 13 and we want to change the name of it to Tom. And the method defined for this API is POST. So select POST method from methods dropdown and send the request from client into the server. Okay, now go to database and select all students again. Here we have ID 13 by the name Kim and age 33. Execute the query again. Now we can see the ID 13 name changed to Tom and age 33 okay in this session we were able to establish communication between the client and the server through rest apis we were able to connect to the database fetch the information inside the table add a new record to it and edit the record in the table we have reached the end of this session i hope you have take full advantage of this session until next session goodbye
Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about WebSocket concept. What is WebSocket? WebSockets provide a bidirectional full duplex communication channel that operates over HTTP through a single TCP IP socket connection. At its core, the WebSocket protocol facilitates message passing between a client and server. In contrast with HTTP request and response connections, WebSockets can transport any number of protocols and provide server-to-client message delivery without pooling. WebSockets are exciting for developers because they allow for bidirectional real-time communication between servers and clients. WebSockets are available on many platforms, including the most common browsers and mobile devices. They are often applied to solve problems of millisecond accurate state synchronization and publish subscribe messaging. A web socket is erected by making a common HTTP request to that server with an upgrade header, which the server should confirm in its response. After this, the connection remains established between that physical client-server pair. If at some point the service needs to be redeployed or the load redistributed, its WebSocket connection needs to be re-established. Why WebSocket? The idea of WebSockets was born out of the limitations of HTTP-based technology. With HTTP, a client requests a resource and the server responds with the requested data. HTTP is a unidirectional protocol. Any data sent from the server to the client must be first requested by the client. Long pooling has traditionally acted as a workaround for this limitation. With long pooling, a client makes a HTTP request with a long timeout period and the server uses that long timeout to push data to the client. Long pooling works but comes with a drawback. Resources on the server are tied up throughout the length of the long pool even when no data is available to send. WebSockets, on the other hand, allow for sending message-based data similar to UDP but with the reliability of TCP. WebSocket uses HTTP as the initial transport mechanism but keeps the TCP connection alive after the HTTP response is received so that it can be used for sending messages between client and service. WebSockets allow us to build real-time applications without the use of long pooling. When can a WebSocket be used? Real-time web application Real-time web application uses a web socket to show the data at the client end, which is continuously being sent by the backend server. In web socket, data is continuously pushed or transmitted into the same connection which is already open. That is why web socket is faster and improves the application performance. Gaming application in a gaming application, you might focus on that data is continuously receiving by the server and without refreshing the UI. It will take effect on the screen. UI gets automatically refreshed without even establishing the new connection. So it is very helpful in a gaming application. Chat application Chat application uses WebSocket to establish the connection only once for exchange, publishing, and broadcasting the message among the subscriber. In reuse the same WebSocket connection for sending and receiving the message and one-to-one -one message transfer. Creating a WebSocket server a WebSocket connection starts with a handshake. This is a little dance the client and server do to a start connection. The client starts out with a normal HTTP request that contains two special headers. 
upgrade colon web socket in connection colon upgrade along with any other required request data like authentication the server then sends back an http 101 switching protocols status code indication to the client which basically says we use to talk in http but we will use something else in the future Along with this HTTP 100 and one response, it also sends the upgrade column WebSocket in connection upgrade headers again. After this, the handshake is complete and the WebSocket connection is in place. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about WebSocket concept. Now it's time to do a project in this session. In this section, we want to implement a simple chat program using WebSocket technology. We design the program in such a way that any client that sends a message to the server and the other clients can see that message. Now let's go to VS Code program to implement this project. This program consists of three different layers, socket, client, and server. First go to package explorer and go to SRC folder and create a project folder named like web socket. Web socket. For this purpose, first download WebSocket package from golang.go. So go to terminal, go to the project folder, cd WebSocket. Now execute the following command go get dash u golang.org slash x slash net slash web socket okay the installation has completed first we will implement the socket layer so go to project folder and create a folder named like socket and create a file named like socket.go inside it socket dot go set a package name package socket this file maintains the set of active connections and broadcast messages to the connections these connections are mapped from a string to array of connections creating different rooms Server sends data to client and client gets data and deserializes it. Then we create a struct that hold channels for communication between client and server. And uh, then create run method for run configurations. The communication data between the client and the server in this example is created by JSON. So first we create a struct for the transmission message. For example, we create a struct name message. Type message a struct. Define a field like subject by the type a string and using JSON tag for it. Subject by the type a string and set JSON tag for it. JSON column double quotation mark and set value for its subject now we create a separate channel for each of the actions in the chat for example to add a client or delete a client or send a message by a client we create separate channel and put them inside the struct so define a struct named like config type 
config extract now define global variable first clients field that is the list of all currently active clients or open web sockets clients and type of this client is a map by a string for key map and key type is a string and web sockets connection as a value that stores the client connection point rav web socket dot connection now define channels for different operations in chat for example for add a client we write define a variable like register client and define a channel chan by the type web socket dot connection and for remove a client we write remove client chan by the type pointer of web socket dot connection and for exchange messages we write for example message data chan by the type message extract message data is a single channel that is responsible for sending and receiving our message data structure in order to be able to initialize the created channels we create a constructor and initialize them so define a function like named new config so we write func new config and return type is a pointer of config extract pointer of config extract the job of this function is to give basic information to the config extract so return a pointer of config extract and create a map for clients and create channels for other fields so we write return ampersand config now invoking each config field struct and initialize them clients create a map for this field by make function make map type of key is a string and type of value is pointer of web socket connection pointer of web socket connection register clients create a channel for register client field by calling make function so we write make chan and pointer web socket of connection and for remove client again we calling make function make chan pointer of web socket connection and for message data create a channel for message data from the message struct so we write make chain of message in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye hello and welcome to the golang programming language course in the previous session we could define channels for chat application 
And now it's time to design and implement methods for the channels created. First, we want to create a method for adding a client. So define a method name like register clients. Because these methods are related to the config extract, we define a receiver for them. So we write func set a receiver config pointer of config and set a name for example register client. This method accept a connection as input parameter. Client by the type pointer of web socket connection. Now we want to implement the body of method. This method is supposed to add the current connection as a client to the client's map. So we write config dot clients. Now set current connection IP as the key for the map. For access the IP of the client, we calling remote address function. So we write client dot remote. address dot string and initialize it by the client equals client for display the list of clients we can use from pin lnf function fp clients config dot clients now we can see the IP of each client we could define a method for add a new client in clients map now we want to create a method for removing the client so define a method name like remove clients func set a receiver for example, config by the type pointer of config. Set a name, for example, remove client. This method acts at the connection as input parameter client web socket dot connection. Now we want to implement the body of method. This method is supposed to remove the connection as a client from the client's map. For this purpose, we calling delete function. The delete built-in function deletes the element with the specified key from the map. This function accepts two parameters. First, a map collection, and second, the key of the element to be removed from the map. So calling delete function, Set clients map as arguments config dot clients and set IP of client as key argument client dot remote address dot string. Now we can see the list of clients after the remove by the calling print ln function fp clients and calling config dot clients now we could define a method for remove a client from clients map now it's time to design a method whose job is to transfer data from the server to the clients. So define a method named like message data. Funk 
set a receiver for example config from config struct message data this method accept an object from message struct as input parameter for example message by the type message struct The job of this method is to call the clients in the client's map collection and send the desired message to the whole clients. So we use the range loop to iterate the clients. So we write for underscore comma define a variable like client column equals range we want to iterate lists of clients, so calling clients map from config struct. Config dot clients. Now we want to send a message to each client. To do this, we use from JSON codec. JSON is a codec to send or receive JSON data in a frame from a WebSocket connection. So from WebSocket package, calling JSON and invoking send method. This function returns an error object. So first define an error variable. Error column equals websocket dot json dot send function. This method accept two parameters. First a connection. So we set client. And second is an object. In this case, our argument is an object from message struct. So we said message. Now check status error. If error not equals nil, log dot fatal error dot error. We could define a method for send data from server to clients. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define methods for implementing channels. In this session, finally, we will define our handler that will listen to the events of the channels. The loop keeps running infinitely and selects the appropriate action based on the channel's event. So we design a method to control this behavior named like run socket so we write find set a receiver like config pointer of config run socket and create a loop as a permanent listener for now we manage the channel's behavior using the select command for different cases so we write select and define our cases earlier we implemented a few methods for different channel behaviors that we will now use from them for example, suppose data is transferred to the register client channel. To implement it, we do the following case. Set a name, register, client, colon, equals send data to channel. Config dot register client now we call the corresponding method for each case 
In this case, for the register client case, we invoking register client methods. So we write config dot register clients and set register client as argument for it register client okay now write case related to remove client case set a name like remove client colon equals and send data to channel config dot remove client colon and calling now remove clients method for this case config dot remove clients and set remove client as argument for this method remove client and write case related to message exchange case set a name like message data message data column equals send data to channel config dot message data column and calling message data's method for this case config dot message data's for it and set message data as argument for this message date reformat the code and save the project now we were able to manage channels control using select in this case we could make all the configuration for implementing the socket layer in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye hello and welcome to the golang programming language course in the previous session we could implement the socket layer now it's time to set up the server layer the task of this layer is to decide and manage requests that are sent from the client to the server so go to package explorer and go to websocket project and create a folder name like server layer and inside it create a file like server.go server.go set package name package main in this file we have to do the things related to setting up the server that is we created an http server and introduced it as a server of the websocket type and send the desired handler to it so define a main method now we create a server by calling the server struct from the http package and initialize its properties so define a variable like server colon equals http dot server and initialize two property first address and second handler address address optionally specifies the tcp address for the server to listen on in this case we want to run server on local host by port number 8085 so we write double quotation mark 127.0.0.1 as localhost IP colon 8085 as port number and handler 
handler to invoke HTTP default serve mux. So for this handler, we need to create a mux server. So go top of this block and define a server mux. From the HTTP package calling new server mux function. This function allocates and returns a new serve mux. So first define a variable like mux server, mux server, colon equals, and invoking new server function mux from HTTP package. HTTP dot new serve mux. Now calling handle function from mux server. Handle function registers the handler for the given pattern. So go to the next line, mux server dot handle. This function accept two arguments. First, a pattern that we set root for it, e.g. local host here. Double quotation mark and set a slash as local host. And second, a handler. In this case, we calling handler function from WebSocket package for it. So we write WebSocket dot handler function. Handler is a simple interface to a WebSocket browser client. It accepts a connection as pointer, which we also create the desired function for it. So we write func and set a connection as pointer of WebSocket connection. Now we set the created mock server as the value for the handler property on the server. So we write handler colon mox server. We created our server and made the configurations inside it. Now it's time to run it. To do this, we call listen and serve function inside the server. This function listens on the TCP network address and then calls serve to handle requests on incoming connections. Listen and serve always returns a non-nil error. So first define a variable like error. Error colon equals from server calling listen and serve function, listen and serve function. Now check error status. Log dot fatal error dot error. Reformat the code and save the project. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we could define Mux server, and in this session, we want to create a WebSocket handler. For the handle function in the Mux server created, we said to run the WebSocket at the root of the project, we need to create a function for the WebSocket to be able to manage the request. Therefore, we create a function named like WebSocket handler. So define. Funk web socket handler.
This function accepts two parameters. First, a connection from pointer of WebSocket connection. So we said connection as pointer of WebSocket connection. And second parameter is an object from the config extract of socket layer. Because we want to start run socket method of config extract. So we said config from pointer of socket of config. First, we start created socket. We do this by calling run socket method from socket package. Because the run socket method is running in the background of the program and examines the channels, the call to this method must be executed in a separate Go routine. So we write Go calling run socket function from config package config dot run socket. Now first client enters the program, we have to add this client to the list of clients, which we do through the register client channel. So we write from config we call register client register client and set connection to the channel connection to the channel now we could add a new client to the list of clients the server now has to wait and listen whether a message comes to it from the client or not if a message is sent from the client to the server server receives and deserializes it and then sends it to other clients for do this first define an infinite loop for Now we want to receive a message from client. To do this, we use from JSON codec. JSON is a codec to send or receive JSON data in a frame from a WebSocket connection. So from WebSocket package, calling JSON and invoking receive method. This method returns an error, so define a variable like error colon equals WebSocket. dot json dot receive this method accepts two parameters first the connection so we set connection and an object is needed a second parameter to be able to put the receive data inside it after the serializing so we are using a message struct object here. Therefore, first define an object from message struct and pass it as pointer the function. So first define a variable like var message from message struct of socket package. And now set as pointer to the function. Ampersand message now implements error status if error not equals nil if the calling receive method returns an error value we must remove the client from the list of the clients to do this call the remove client channel from the config package and send the current client to it so we write config dot remove client and set connection to channel connection in this case the server should not stop and continue to work so we use the continue command continue now if there is no error the received message should be sent to each client do this by sending message to message data channel of config package so we write 
config dot message data and send to channel message reformat the code and save the project we were able to implement a handler for WebSocket. Now it's time to introduce the created function as handler into WebSocket. To do this, enter the main method and call the created method inside the WebSocket handler. Go to main method. Now calling WebSocket handler function for first argument we set connection and for second argument first we define an object from config struct by calling new config constructor from socket package so first define a variable like config column equals and calling new config constructor from socket package socket dot new config now set config variable as second argument for web socket handler config okay we were able to implement the server layer in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we were able to implement the server layer. And in this session, we want to implement the client layer. So go to package explorer and go to WebSocket folder and create a folder named like client layer. Client layer and inside it create a file name like client.go client.go now set a package name package main okay in this file we have to do the things related to setting up the client and client needs to connect to the server so define a main method fn first client must communicate with the server to do this we call the dial function from the websocket package dial function opens a new client connection to a websocket this function accepts two arguments and returns two values first a connection and second an error so first define two variables like connection and error connection comma error colon equals web socket dot dial first argument is a server address that in this case it is local host and we define the 8085 port for it when we use a web socket, our protocol is not HTTP type, but it is a WS type. So we write double quotation mark WS colon S slash S slash 127.0.0.1 as local host column 8085 as port number. The second argument specifies the type of protocol. This argument is set when the type of protocol is not specified in the address. And since we specified the type of protocol in the URL, we no longer need to set this argument. So set a double quotation mark. And third argument requires us to have an origin where we send the IP clients as the origin to the function so we have to implement a method to create the IP client for example create a function named like create IP 
create IP. So go out of this function and implement the create IP method. This function supposed to return a string value. So we define func create IP and return type is a string. Now we should create an IP. Since IP consists of four parts, we need to create a four element array by the int type. So we write var IP four by the type int. Now we want to initialize the array. For do this using the int n function from the rand package. We assign a random number between 0 and 256 to each of the array cells created. We do this through a for loop to the number of the array members, which is 4 cells. To set the array, so we write for i colon equals 0, i less than len of array and i plus plus in order for the generated number not to be the same we use the seed function from the rent package seed function uses the provided seed value to initialize the default source to a deterministic state and calling now function of time package as argument for it so we write rent dot seed and calling now function from time package time dot now dot unix nano now write ip index i equals calling int and function of rent package rent dot int and function and set 256 as argument for it 256 now we create and return ip using the sprintf function from the fmt package so we write return fmt dot sprintf http column s slash r slash person d dot person d dot person d dot person d and set ip array elements as argument for this method ip index 0 for first element ip index 1 for second variable IP index 2 for third element and IP index 3 for fourth element. Now we could define create IP function. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we could define create IP function. And in this session, we want to create another functions. The main method in the client should be contains two functions. First, a function for receiving a message and second, a function for sending a message. Now we go to implement the receive message function. For do this, create a new function named like receive message. So we write func receive message. 
This function accept a parameter as pointer of WebSocket connection. So set a variable like connection by the type pointer of WebSocket connection dot connection. We use infinite loop, therefore our function is always ready to receive the message. So write for... Now we want to receive a message from client. To do this, we use from JSON codec. JSON is a codec to send or receive JSON data in a frame from a WebSocket connection. So from WebSocket package, calling JSON and invoking receive method. This method returns an error, so define a variable like error. Error colon equals WebSocket dot JSON dot receive. This method accepts two parameters. First a connection, so we set connection and an object is needed as second parameter to be able to put the receive data inside it after the serializing. So we are using a message struct object here. Therefore first define an object from message struct and pass it as pointer the function. So define a variable like var message from message struct of socket package dot message and set this variable as second argument for receive function okay now implements error status if error not equals nil log dot fatal and set a message error in receive date column and set error message if there is an error the program should not be stopped and should continue to work so use continue command and go to the next line and continue and if there is no error print a message so we write fp message is and set message dot subject we were able to implement the receive message function now we call the created function inside the main method as a separate go routine. So go to main function and calling receive message as a go routine. But before it, check error status. If error not equals nil log dot fatal error dot error and now calling receive message as a go routine go routine receive message and set connection as argument for it connection so top of calling receive message function to make sure our connection is closed after the server is done we close connection by the command differ connection close so write differ connection dot close now we go to implement the send message. For do this, create a new function named like send message. So go after the receive message function and create another function like func send message. This function accepts a parameter as pointer of WebSocket connection. So set a variable like connection by the type pointer of WebSocket connection okay 
To get the value from the standard input, we use the new scanner function from buff.io package and create a scanner. This function returns a new scanner to read from reader. So first define a variable like a scanner. Scanner column equals from buff IO package column new scanner function new scanner set a standard input from OS package as argument for this function stdin is open files pointing to the standard input so we write OS dot stdin to read the information in the scanner we need a for loop and this for loop is activated when the user has sent information via input standard and we do this by invoking a scan function so go to the next line for scanner calling scan function If the user enters information inside the standard input, the program enters the for loop and the scan function is called and reads the information in the scanner and we get scanner data by calling text function. So first define a variable like text, text colon equals scanner dot text. Now we send the received data inside the text variable to the server via JSON format. We do this by calling send method from socket package. Send method accepts two parameters. First, the connection, and second is an object. In this case, our argument is an object from message struct. So before calling send function, we create a message variable and initialize the subject field of message struct by the text field value. So we write message colon equal socket dot message and initialize subject by text variable. Oh, here we name test, we change it to text. Okay. Now calling send function, this function returns an error object. So we define an error variable. Error column equals web socket dot json dot send function and set connection as a first argument connection and set message as second argument message now check error status if error not means display an error fp error in send data and set error variable if there is an error the program should not be stopped and should continue to work so we use continue command go to the next line and continue okay we were able to implement the send message function now we call the created function inside the main method so go to main method and write the function send message and set connection as argument for it reformat the code save the project in this case we could implement the client layer in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye
Hello and welcome to the GoLang programming language course. In the previous session, we could implement the client layer. And in this session, we want to create a web client program. So that we can run the client layer of this project both in the terminal and on the web. The web client program consists of two main parts. An HTML template and a JavaScript code. Now it's time to implement the web client. So first go to package explorer and go to WebSocket folder, right click on the client layer and create a file named like index by HTML extension. Now let's start creating our template. For this purpose, first type HTML keyword and select HTML column 5 and press enter. Now we can see the program creates a basic template of the web application that contains HTML tag, head tag, body tag. Our web application is supposed to receive a message from the input and send a message to the server with the push of the button and display it both on the web page and the other clients. So we need a text field component to receive the message from the user and the button component to send it to the server. For this purpose, we use from input tag in HTML. So go to the body tag and first define a form component form component and in form component we write our tags first define a dive tag for set alignment dive now define a style for this dive a style and set text align and set center value for this attribute and set padding top padding top for example 20 pixels 20 pixels okay and go to the dive and write our input text input first input is a text field so type is text and id message for example go to the next line and define another tag input this is a push button so we said type of this input is a reset for example type reset and set a value for example send data and set the id for this tag id we set save and set a background color for this button so define a style attribute and select background color and set for example line okay we could design our html template now it's time to implement the JavaScript code. For this purpose, go after closed form tag and define a script tag for implementing our code. Go after form, define a script tag, a script, and set our script in this tag. In order to be able to execute our JavaScript code, we need to enter the jQuery CDN address into the program. For this purpose, go to the code.jQuery.com site. Type code.jQuery.com Select last version jQuery CDN. Here is 3.x and select minified version okay 
In the pop-up panel that opens, click on the copy icon on the right side of the page to copy the information in the pop-up to the clipboard. Now go to HTML template and paste it in head tag. Now go to head tag and paste here. Okay. Now go to implement our JavaScript code. To connect JavaScript to a WebSocket server, we need to create an object from the WebSocket that we put inside a variable. So first define a variable named like socket by calling var keyword. Var socket equals new web socket. Now set server URL as argument for it. Double quotation mark and set ws colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 as localhost column 8085 as port number. Now we have to say that when the user clicks on the send button, the information inside the text field is sent as a message to the socket web server. Go to the next line. So we write dollar sign calling button ID in this case is safe sharp safe or ID of the send button and say when user clicks the button do something for it so calling click dot click and define a function for it function Now we need to implement this function. First, we get the information inside the text field and place it inside a variable, such as a message. For do this, calling val function on text field ID. So we write var message, for example, equals dollar sign. Sharp message as ID of text field dot val. Now we send the desired message from the socket to the socket web server via the send function. So go to the next line socket dot send. Our message here is of a string type while our server is ready to respond to JSON type requests. So we have to convert our message to the message struct format on the WebSocket server and then send it. To do this, we use the stringify function of the JSON package. So we write JSON dot stringify and calling subject field of message struct in WebSocket server and initialize it by the message. So calling subject column message. Now after each submit the button, the content message inside the text field should be empty and ready to receive a new message from the user. To do this, we do this by calling getElementById function from document. So we write document.getElementById and set id of text field. Here is message. Dot value equals null. We were able to send our data to the WebSocket server. But if a message came from the server to the client, we should receive it and display it. To do this, we do the following. First, we call onMessage function of the socket and initialize a method for it. So we write socket dot onMessage 
equals function as input value we pass a variable for example result now we should implement the function body we need to receive the data sent from the server side here, the data sent from the server side is an object of message structure in JSON format. So, we have to deserialize the send data and set it into a variable. So, first define a variable like message var message equals from JSON package calling parse function. JSON dot parse and set send data as argument to it in this case it is result result dot data after the serialized data to message struct we fetch subject field of it so we write dot subject dot subject we need to display the receive message in the browser so to do this we use the element and display each message in one line so do the following go to the next line define a variable for example message element var message element equals and calling create element of document document dot create element and set dive tag okay now we assign the content in the message variable to the created element so we write message element dot text content equals message now we use the prepend function to add the received message to the list of messages and display each new message at the top of the list on the browser so before calling prepend function first go to the html code and define a new dive tag for display all messages so go to the form after this dive create a new dive set an id for it for example messages id we set messages and set a style text align attribute we set center and set a padding for it for example padding top 20 pixel and set a color uh, for example medium blue okay reformat the code and save the project Go to the script and continue the calling prepend function. Go to the next line. So we write dollar sign. Calling ID of the messages dial. In this case, it is messages. Now set it double quotation sharp or ID messages. And invoking prepend function prepend function and set message element as argument for it okay we also managed to create and implement a web client in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous sessions, we were able to implement the socket, server, and client layers. Now it's time to run the project. It is important to note that the server layer and the socket layer must be executed simultaneously. To do this, enter the terminal and execute the following command. So type go run 
first go to server.go server layer server.go and command get wet and go to the socket.go socket socket.go and press enter okay now server is running we need to execute the client layer for this purpose we use two separate terminals to execute the client and server methods to do this right click on the client.go and select revolving file explorer in the window that opens hold down the shift key and right click and select open powershell window Now a new PowerShell terminal opens for us. Hold down the shift key inside the same page again. Right click and select open PowerShell window here again. Okay. Resize the two open terminals inside the screen so we can see both at the same time. first terminal second terminal also in the window that opens open the index file by double clicking on it okay resize this browser Okay. Now we use this command to start communication between client and server in each client in PowerShell terminal. Go run dot backslash client dot go. First terminal is running and go to second terminal and do this command again go run dot backslash client dot go and second terminal is running now it is important to note that first the server and socket must be started and then the client file must be started after its execution we now have three clients running two clients in two separate terminals and one client on the web it's time to exchange data and messages between them. Once sent a message from each client to the server, the sent message must be visible on all clients. For example, we sent a hello message in first terminal. Hello. Okay, now we see that this message is seen in other clients. First terminal, second terminal, and browser. And we do the same from another client. For example, in the second terminal, we send a welcome message. Well, come. Okay, we see that this message is also visible to other clients. And now we want to send a message from our web client. For example, we send a goodbye. Send data. Okay, we see that the message sent is visible to all clients. Okay, in this session, we were able to implement a simple chat program using the web socket in GoLang. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Goodbye. <laughs>
then make examples by your own as well and always remember the more exercises you do the more professional you will be now you are be able to do various programs in different fields including software design and development implementation of web applications and communication with clients and implementation of various games and communication programs since you have completely reviewed concepts of database and GoRM framework services including RESTful and gRPC to communicate with other services and applications, WebSocket concepts for game implementation and real-time programs like chat applications. Let's look at some of these programs which you are now able to write and implement. Network distribution services Create your own distributed services and contribute to open source projects. For example, you are able to build networked, secured clients and server with gRPC. Cloud native development The synchronous features of Go and its high portability makes it suitable for building native cloud applications and Go has been used to build several cloud computing platforms including Docker and Kubernetes. An alternative for existing infrastructure Another advantage of Go language is that many of the softwares we need to use for internet infrastructure are aging and have many security holes. Rewriting such items in Go has many benefits, better memory security, easier deployment of CRASS platform and clean code base for future upgrades are some examples. Independent facilities and tools Another advantage of Go language is that Go programs are compiled with minimal external dependencies i.e. the binary, which makes them ideal for creating utilities and other tools, since they run quickly and can be easily repacked for redistribution. I hope you have enjoyed this course and wish you all the best. Looking forward to meeting you in our next tutorial. Goodbye.